Let's see if we can factor this polynomial 3x to the fourth plus 8x cubed plus 5x squared. Now I see that it's a trinomial and one thing that catches my attention is that there's some common factors here. That's always what we should look for first to see if there's anything common to all three of these terms here. And so there's the coefficients of 3 and 8 and 5. There's nothing really common with the coefficients, but we have an x to the fourth in the first term then an x cubed, then an x squared. So I do have a common factor of x squared that can be pulled out of these three. So we have x squared times 3x squared, uh, because x squared times 3x squared would give me x to the fourth, plus 8x plus 5. Those are the remaining two terms we would need so that if I distributed the x squared through, I'd get my original polynomial. All right, now I'm not done because whenever you factor it once, you should always see, can you factor those factors even farther? And so I think we can still at least look at the second polynomial and see if we can keep going. Because this has a leading coefficient other than one, um, you can either factor this pol polynomial using the trial and error method, or you can use the grouping method. And for this video, I think we're gonna try the grouping method uh, just to try that. Uh, that is an example. So here what we're going to do is we're going to take the 3 and the 5 and we're going to multiply those guys to get 15. And then I'm going to look for the different factors of 15 and there's there's a few of them, 1 and 15 and 3 and 5. And then I'm going to scan this list. I'm going to see if any of those could add up to an 8x or an 8. And in fact the 3 and the 5 could add to 8. So what I'm going to do to this 8x is I'm going to separate it into 3x plus 5x. And so let me rewrite this polynomial here. Don't forget your x squared. So I have x squared. And then we'll have, and I'm actually going to put brackets here, um, 3x squared plus 3x plus 5x plus 5. And you'll notice the 3x squared, I'm sorry, the 3x plus 5x, that's still the same as 8x. These two polynomials in blue are the same thing, but I've separated those middle terms. And so once you've got these separated, and now that you have four terms, now we're going to factor by grouping, which um, you're familiar with the grouping method. We're going to group the first two terms, and we're going to group the second two terms, and we're going to factor each of these guys. So the first term to have our x squared. The first term has a common factor of 3x. So if you pull the 3x out, you'll get a leftover x plus 1. And in the second group here, 5x plus 5, you can pull out a common factor of 5, and you'll be left with an x plus 1 also. Then uh, you look at these two guys, and you notice each of these have a common factor of x plus 1. So if you pull that x plus 1 common factor out, you'll have x squared, then you'll have an x plus 1, and then let's write down what's left over after the x plus 1's have been pulled out. Well, in the first term here, you'd have a 3x left, and then plus, and then in the second term, after you pull out x plus 1, you have a 5 left. And so this right here is our finished factored form of this original polynomial right here. So your general steps are pull out any common factors that you have and then if your a is not 1, a good technique you can try is this grouping method where you separate the middle term into two terms based off of what the product of the leading term, the leading coefficient, and the constant term. So you can look at those factorizations and decide how you could separate the middle term in order to finish this using factor by grouping.